Life insurance is protection. Life insurance is not a retirement account. It's not a retirement plan. Life insurance is protection in case something was to happen to my husband. Now, there are different types of policies that we need to understand. And we start off with the very first policy that was invented, and that is called traditional whole life. Traditional whole life. It insures you for your whole life, just like it sounds, hence its name. Your whole life, according to the mortality tables developed by actuaries, will last until you are age 100. So there's an important point for all whole life policies. They provide permanent protection from the time in which you buy the policy, which is called your original age, until you die or until you reach the age of 100. So whole life is a type of policy that provides protection for your whole life. So let's give an example. Let's say that you decide to buy a policy at the age of 30. The age you are when you purchase your policy is called your original age. You will go through underwriting. You will have to pass a physical. Your premium will be based upon your age, your gender, your health, your hobbies when you buy the policy. So if you buy the policy at age 30, when you have a desk job, but at age 35 you decide to become a professional stunt pilot, they cannot change your whole life premium. It is fixed. So the premium for whole life is a fixed premium. It's based upon your original age. Now how much protection did you buy? Let's say that you bought a policy with a face amount of $100,000. You are going to pay a premium every year for the life of the policy. So this premium is fixed. How often you pay your premium is called mode of payment. Think about your car insurance. The more frequently you pay it, the more or less expensive. What does it ultimately end up being? More expensive, of course, because of service fees. So what allows an insurance company to charge service fees? Mode of payment. I would like you to assume for purposes of the test that the premium is paid on an annual basis. Now you're purchasing, in my example here, a $100,000 policy. That is your face amount. It's sometimes called your death benefit or your policy proceeds all mean the same thing. And let's say that your annual premium is $1,000, $1,000 a year. Will that ever change? No, nothing can ever change your whole life premium. So you pay $1,000 a year. Now this is a type of traditional whole life called straight or sometimes they refer to it as ordinary whole life. What that means is that the premium payments are paid every single year from their original age for the life of the policy until you die or you reach the magic age of exactly 100. So permanent protection. If you pay in $1,000 when you're 30 and you die at 31, how much will the policy pay? $100,000 to your beneficiary tax-free. Life insurance policy proceeds are always tax-free to your beneficiary. That's important to understand. What if you died at, uh, let's say, 65? How much is paid out? Still, $100,000. What if you died at 99? How much is paid out? $100,000. Taxable or tax-free to your beneficiary? Tax-free, of course. Life insurance policy face amounts are tax-free to your beneficiary. So traditional whole life, it has permanent protection, plus it's going to have a growing cash value. So whole life is a cash value policy. So we need to understand how that works. 
There's an important rule for whole life policies. In the beginning years of the policy, there is no cash value. So for the first three years is a general rule of thumb. So here you are at age 30. You pay in your $1,000 a year during the first three years. You have no cash value. So you cannot take out a loan against your policy unless you have a positive cash value. So can you take out a loan at 31? No, but what if you die at 31? Do you have protection? Yes, of course. Now, over time, exactly what your cash value is, is guaranteed. So pretend I can draw symmetrically, because I can't. But exactly what your cash value is going to be at every age, when you purchase your policy at the back of your policy, it has a table of guaranteed cash value, so that at each specific age, you know exactly what your cash value will be because cash value on whole life is made up of two things. The first thing that it's made up of is the premium. Now, let me ask, is the premium going to change or is it fixed? It's fixed. Now, what do they do with your premium? They put it into the insurance companies, what's called general account. Anytime your premium goes into the general account of the insurance company, it has a guaranteed interest rate. So I remember general account has a guaranteed interest rate because they both start with G. That just helps me remember. So this guaranteed interest rate, the insurance company takes your premiums and invests it conservatively in things like bonds and preferred stock. And they promise to pay you usually around 4%. So for purposes of this class and of this test, we will assume that the interest rate in the general account is 4%. So they take your premium, which is fixed, put it in the general account, and that goes into your cash value plus interest. And do you know exactly what the interest is going to be over time? You certainly do, 4% in this traditional whole life policy. So they could ask you on the test, who has the risk in the general account? If the insurance company should earn 12%, what do they have to pay you? <laughs> 4%. Of course, they make their money there. What if they only earned 1%? How much would they have to pay you? 4%. So that the insurance company has the risk in the general account. But I want to make an important point that I haven't done yet. There's a couple of very important terms that we need to feel comfortable with. I just said that the insurance company has the risk. The term that they typically will use on this test is insurer. Now I know that you know that the insurance company is the insurer, but just be really careful. Sometimes our brains read this word wrong and we accidentally thought that we read the word insure da. Who's that? That's your client. You are the person selling insurance, the producer or the agent. So the insurer is the company, the insured is the client. So who has a risk in the general account? The insurer does, of course.